So I'm going to be go ahead and giving this router away completely free. So to enter, you must do two things. One, go ahead and drop a comment in the comment section down below saying that, hey, I want that router and I would use it for blank. And then tell me why or how you would be using it. Secondly, go ahead and also email me at brad at shinytechthings.com with the subject line of I want that free router. And then in the email, also tell me maybe in a little bit more detail on why you would like to have the router and what exactly you would be using it for. And that is it. And of course, if you haven't already hit like on this video, go ahead and slap like right now. And then also click on subscribe if you haven't already. Let's get started. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and try to get logged into this router for the first time and see what we can do with it. Now, I have the Ethernet plugged from the computer to the router, and then the router then connected to my switch, which is also behind another router. So we can see here, it's enable the router to automatically update to future firmware automatically. Agree, disagree to router analytics data, apply it. So then that redirects us to routerlogin.net. And now we just hurry up and wait. It's like watching paint dry story of my life. An existing router or gateway is detected in your network. It appears that you are installing the Netgear router behind your existing internet provider Wi-Fi router or gateway. You can choose to install your router in a different operation mode. You can help me choose or let me choose. Since I already know it's a router behind a router, that's fine. And let's do router mode instead of access point mode and then hit next. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and just click on no and just accept the defaults here. So that way we can go ahead and finish getting this set up and logged in for the first time. I'm just gonna close the browser and reconnect. And it looks like it wants to do the very same thing all over again. So router mode, no, and I will just grab that, hit next. I'm just doing password one, two, three because it's totally ultra not secure. I just want to get into it and see the firmware version that it's running and get it all up to date. Now it automatically is downloading the Netgear Genie installer. Let's see if I can just continue without installing it. Alright, so it is running 1.0.9.32 and the latest version available right now is 1.0.9.88. So we will upgrade that. And it's always a great idea that whenever you do update firmware that you only do it over a wired connection and the reason for that is because if Wi-Fi ends up flaking out for whatever reason say from some interference from some neighbors or if you're on 2.4 gigahertz on microwave cooking something at that time then things can go horribly wrong and you might have to reboot the router into a recovery mode and then from that recovery mode manually reflash the firmware over the wire and that is, of course, if that actually works for you, because there have been instances in which you might not be able to do that, in which case you will be replacing your router most likely. Or if it's still under warranty, sending it in for an RMA. Back to the router. It is still rebooting. I'll just give that a few more minutes. Well, this is kind of disappointing. Like, it is forcing us to actually create an account if we don't already have one with Netgear. I don't like it. I don't think that you should have to do something like this. Who do you think you are? Microsoft? I do not want any spam from you, Nightgear. Well, that's interesting. It looks like I might have to give a call to my friend and get his credentials to be able to log into this router. That is so horrible. All right, I'm going to try one other thing here and see if I can just get directly to it. And it's asking me to change the password yet again. Ah, the new firmware actually has some type of security requirements, and the old firmware did not. Nightgear, you did something, right? Don't ever remind me again. Netgear Armor is available for your router. Make your network safer. Something tells me they want to charge an ongoing fee for this. If you haven't already, check out my videos on the Pangolin Drop-In Smart Firewall, and I'll go ahead and post something somewhere here, or somewhere on the screen for you to go ahead and click on. As well as I will go ahead and leave a link down below. So if you want to go ahead and check out the Pangolin, that's something that you pay for once, and it gets lifetime updates forever. You just drop it in and go. I'm going to go ahead and say never remind me again, and click no. Same thing with Circles Disney. Now, it could be wrong. That might be free on this, but I believe it is a paid product. 
All right, so I'm going to go ahead and eat dinner because I hear chairs moving around out in the kitchen. And right afterwards, I will jump right on back and see when the firmware was released that we just updated it to. And if it's relatively old, then see if I can go ahead and find some third-party firmware that we can load on it and get it rocking from there. I'll be right back. All right, guys, I'm back from eating dinner, so let's go ahead and jump right back in. So we're going to go ahead and come on over to the router update and check it again. I'm assuming that it took us from the version that we were running to the latest, but that might not be the case. Okay, so there is no new version of the firmware. But let's go ahead and manually search for the download, just again to make sure that there is not a newer version that is available, and to see when this came out, if it will even tell us. Interesting. So uh, right now we are on the 1.0.9. And the latest version is 1.0.11.110. So let's go ahead and download it. And check out the release notes while that's downloading. Fixed security issues. See if we can find any release date. But look here. Thousands of Netgear routers are at risk of getting hacked. What to do? Update your firmware. Which we're doing. Alright, so let's go ahead and... Open up where this is at, extract it out, and that actually came out on September 30th of this year, or at least that's the date modified for the file itself. All right, so let's go ahead and click on Browse, go to the Downloads where I put it at, go back into that folder, select the file, and upload. Okay. Now again, you absolutely want to do this over an Ethernet cable. Do not risk breaking your router just for the convenience of using Wi-Fi. It is rebooting again. So while we're waiting, go ahead and drop a comment down below and let me know what other kind of videos you'd like to see me make. Is there anything else that you'd like to see me try to fix up and give away on my channel? Or is there any warranty in particular that you want me to avoid intentionally and see if I can force it to do a lot more than what the manufacturer originally intended? What would be awesome is that if firmware updates like this said rebooting, please go make a pot of coffee and come back. It's tempting. I might just go do it. Hey, what's this? I just found a wireless card. Should I give it away? If somebody wants it, go ahead and drop me an email and leave a comment down below. And as long as I don't lose it before then, I will ship it to you for free within the United States. And if international, as long as you pay the difference in shipping, I will go ahead and ship it to you. I just put it directly above the BDU, so in case I forget, remind me. Alright, never remind me again, and skip that again. Close out circle. Okay. Alright, so now let's go ahead and see what firmware is available for the R7000, if any third-party firmware is available. Alright, so it looks like that based on what I'm reading here in the Network Gear community is that if you do run DDWRT, then the chipset that is inside the router uh, looks like it's probably not completely fully supported. So the speeds, they claim you can only get up to a 200 to 300 megabit per second link. And it also does not support 160 megahertz channel width or has a problem with uh, multi-in, multi-out, or MIMO. The official firmware, this particular uh, user says that they were able to establish a 866 megabit per second link using the stock firmware. Let's see what else we see. And this very last post right here, that is actually not that long ago, um, is basically saying that the 1.0.7.12 underscore 1.2.5 uh, 
allegedly has the best throughput. Now, the thing is, is that because they have patched some security issues within the firmware, you would have to ask yourself whether or not going to an older version of the stock firmware is safe enough for your network before just downloading the older firmware and reflashing it. But let's see how new of a DDWRT release there is for it. So it looks like that you could possibly get similar throughput running non-SFE DDWRT with a 20% overclock. I'm not sure if you want to do that or not, whoever ends up winning this. So I'm probably going to just keep it stock for now and decide later on with whoever wins this router what firmware to go ahead and load on it, or just to keep it stock. Wow, you actually have to download the change log? It doesn't make any sense. I don't know when that was released. Oh, there we go. November 17th of... 2017, so I would not go with Advanced Tomato. Now, I wonder if Gargoyle is still around. Okay, so because Gargoyle uses OpenWRT as its base and it is not supported by OpenWRT, there is no Gargoyle firmware for this router um, that I currently see. And again, wow, that's going back to 2014. So let's see the OpenWRT. Alright, so it looks like that it is not completely supported, so I'm going to go ahead and just keep it as the stock latest firmware as it is right now. Again, go ahead and drop a comment below if this is something that uh, you're interested in and tell me how you would best use it. And then also go ahead and shoot me an email at brad at shinytechthings.com and then I will randomly pick one winner for this router. And like everything else that I've been giving away recently, uh, I will go ahead and pay for shipping within the United States. Outside the United States, you'll have to pay the difference if you want it shipped internationally. All right, well, that's it for this video, and uh, now I'm going to start editing it. So go ahead and, if you haven't already, go ahead and slap that like button like you mean it. And if you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and click on subscribe and tap that little bell for the icon so that you won't miss any of my releases. And if you're new to the channel, I just want to go ahead and throw out there that on uh, every Tuesday I'm trying to go ahead and release a Tech Support Tuesday video that is basically just a quick tutorial on something technical. And then on Fridays, I go ahead and try to release the standard videos just like the one that you're watching right now. So go ahead and subscribe so you don't miss a beat. And again, I really appreciate you watching this all the way through, and I will catch you in the next one. Now, one other quick thing. I forgot. <laughs> uh, don't you just hate it when you forget things? <laughs>